Let me tell you one thing about Stanford. It is very hard to fail a class. I actually got a no credit in it. And so this means that I failed this class. I was really stressed out. Like you can actually see this yoga class was for stress management. Undergrad was kind of a hot mess for me. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's Afuego. Today, I'm going to break down all the classes that I took at Stanford as an undergrad in computer science and as a master's student in electrical engineering. There's this misconception that you have to have a perfect academic track record to end up in great academic or career positions, but it's honestly about much more than the grades. So today, I'm going to break down what classes I took, the grades and GPA that I got, and what classes actually mattered. And you're gonna see that you don't have to be perfect to end up in a good place. So to summarize my academic trajectory, in high school I had a 4.8 GPA and I got into Stanford early action. My GPA was weighted out of four because of AP classes. And I had Calc BC credits, so I didn't have to take the first year of calculus in my first year of undergrad. I did a bachelor's of science in computer science and a master's of science in electrical engineering. My focus in computer science was artificial intelligence and my EE focus was signal processing. What's kind of strange is that it calls me a co-terminal graduate from 2012 to 2015, which is like a four year undergrad term, but I definitely started undergrad in 2011. So I don't know what's up with that, but um, yeah. So let's start with my first year at Stanford. You're gonna see pretty quickly that undergrad was kind of a hot mess for me. I'm gonna run through these classes grouped by subject. For math classes, I took CME 100A and CME 102A. These were computational and mathematical engineering courses. They were very MATLAB focused and it included content on vector and differential calculus. I honestly took them because I didn't wanna take linear algebra because I wanted to get straight A's, but I still ended up getting a B plus in both classes. Honestly, because I bombed the exams. Typically, if I got to be in a course, it was because I bombed the exams. For engineering and science courses, I took engineering 31, which is an engineering focused chemical principles course, physics 41 and 42, which was just a classical mechanics physics course, chem 33, organic chemistry, engineering 25B, which was an intro to biotechnology course, and CS 106A, which was the intro computer science course. So for most of these engineering classes, I got my normal B, meaning I understood the material relatively I did all the homework assignments, but I bombed the tests. So this Chem 33 class, I actually got a no credit in it. And so this means that I failed this class. And to this day, I have little clue what goes on in organic chemistry. I did redeem myself that quarter by taking CS 106A and end up getting an A in the class. And honestly, this was the reason why I ended up switching from chemical engineering to computer science. This was really my first A in an engineering or science course this entire year. And finally for humanities, I took IHEM 72, which was this poetry course that I took for general education requirements. I also took IHEM 40A and 40B, which were about archaeology. I actually really enjoyed those courses. And I also took a power course, which is the program in writing and rhetoric. Those humanities courses honestly saved my GPA that first year because I ended up with a 3.44 GPA. I also took a modern dance class over the summer because I was working on campus and why not? On to my second year. I was computer science heavy during my sophomore year, really trying to catch up from the fact that I had only taken one computer science course during my first year. So I took a bunch of independent study courses this year, got research credit from that, which actually gave me a letter grade. That was really good for my GPA. I basically took all my foundational computer science courses my second year, CS1U, which was just learning Unix commands, CS103, mathematical foundations for computing, CS106X, which was a C++ focused programming course, CS107, a C focused program programming course really focused on systems. CS109, which was a probability and math class for computer science. I also took a compilers course, but I withdrew from that class and I took an ethics course for computer scientists. That was really a required course from the department. Honestly, most of these courses were required courses, except for maybe that Unix class. I also took engineering 46, which was an engineering for good class. And we tried to make this mobile health app and it didn't really work, but we got an A minus. Basically in all of the computer science classes I took, I got B's again, again, because I failed the tests. Except for CS106X, because I really understood that material and also all of my independent research credits, which honestly really helped my GPA. This year I also took some more general education requirements. I took my language requirement, which was a series of French courses. And I also took another one of those writing courses, which was required for everybody. So yeah, at the end of my sophomore year, I had a 3.505 GPA, which was honestly a little bit better. On to junior year, 
I really started taking courses that focused on my concentration, which was artificial intelligence. I took CS108, which was object-oriented programming, CS223A, which was basically a kinematics and inverse kinematics for robotics course, CS224M, which was a multi-agent systems course, CS227B, which was a general game playing course, and CS277, which was an experimental haptics course. I think I was just searching around for what my focus in computer science would be, and this is when I really realized that I wanted to do artificial intelligence. I honestly got quite a bit of A's in my computer science classes this year. I also finally took linear algebra this year because I felt like I had to know linear algebra to be a machine learning engineer. And I took some theater classes and also this African American studies, which was really a theater class because I was in a play that year. So at the end of my junior year, GPA actually went up again to a 3.514. On to my fourth year. This was supposed to be my senior year, but I ended up applying to the co-term during the winter quarter. I took an intro to computer vision course, an artificial intelligence course, as well as a web apps course, another C-focused systems course that I was required to take. And then I also took my senior project course. I made these haptic fingertips that I was absolutely obsessed with at the time. And I also took this semiconductor device physics class. This is because I was trying to start the beginning of my EE master's degree. This year was all about taking more advanced machine learning courses so I could really get deep into the machine learning, but also starting to take those electrical engineering courses because I was converting to electrical engineering space, trying to focus on a hybrid between like signal processing and AI. I don't know why I chose semiconductor device physics. I think because I want to feel like a hardcore hardware person. I actually did really well during the entire quarter, but I absolutely completely failed that exam. And it was kind of sad because the professor actually emailed me saying, I'm so shocked that you failed this because I thought you were gonna do well because you did well during the whole year. And honestly, same. After that year, I had a 3.471. And my grad GPA, which actually started spring quarter, was a 2.7. So on to my fifth year. So my fifth year, I was fully a co-term student. I was taking mostly my master's courses and finishing up my undergrad courses. I took an undergrad computer science course in databases, as well as an algorithms class. And I got a B plus in databases. Again, you know, did pretty well doing the material, didn't do so well on the tests. But I got a C plus in this algorithms course. Let me tell you one thing about Stanford. It is very hard to fail a class if you take it for a letter grade and you go to class and turn in some form of assignments. Participation will get you that grade. It's very hard to fail a class. And for my master's this year, I took digital image processing, some signal processing courses, and I also took an advanced computer vision course that was actually for my master's. And I also ended up taking a hip hop and a yoga class because I was really stressed out. Like you can actually see this yoga class was for stress management. So at the end of this year, my undergrad was complete and my final undergraduate GPA was a 3.427. And my graduate GPA was actually a 3.643, which was a huge increase from that 2.7 from the last year. So, you know, I was really getting the hang of being a good student and figuring out how to do well on tests. So my final year at Stanford, I was finishing up my master's degree. So all these classes were electrical engineering requirements. I actually took a bunch of classes in the music department, which were really just signal processing classes focused on music. Those were audio signal processing and perceptual audio coding. I also took some more random EE classes like Fourier transforms. I took some networking classes as well. I took some more computer science classes in the AI space. I took a class on math for robotics, vision, and graphics. And I also took a class on convolutional neural networks that was honestly so amazing. And it's honestly why I'm doing a lot of the research I'm doing today. And so my final graduate GPA after all of this was a 3.706. You can kind of see in my master's program, I really got it together. I started getting those A's, but really I was getting A's because these are classes within my niche that I really cared about. And honestly, I had gotten really good at that time. Towards the end of my degrees, I really figured out how to be an efficient student. There are definitely cheat codes to getting A's in classes. If you want a video on that, like my pinned comment below. But yeah, that's really it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, as always, give it a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Later.